everyone, and welcome back to my complete career run through in Kerbal Space Program 0.23. And this is the state of our tech tree so far. In the last uh, episode, we completed a mission to Jewel. So let's uh, pick up some new parts. I definitely want the Gravioli detector, so we'll get that. Not too sure about the huge rover wheels yet. Um, batteries. These ion and remote parts I'm not using. I guess I should get this one just so I can see what's up in front there. Yeah. Well, I mean the rapiers, I I want to try those out. Nose cone would be helpful maybe. Heavy aerodynamics. I can get this one and one of these. I would tend to like the rapier. But, but maybe uh, maybe we'll stick to spacecraft parts for now. So I'll get this. And of these three, I guess I'll get this one. Oh, what do we have here? Uh, large probes. Oh, RTGs could be useful, but uh, we're out of science now. So let's go to VAB and see what I can cook up. So, for once, I'm not going to build the craft in front of you, and part of the reason is because it's uh, just a slightly modified version of the last craft we use. Um, everything from here on down, except for the lights, is exactly the same. Uh, this is the same stage that brought us to Jewel. And what I've done is I've eliminated the, the sort of uh, pod that we had before, and this is going to be our space tug. So, uh, I think it was Robert Oakley uh, in the comment section who suggested uh, doing a Kerbin orbit rendezvous, basically sending up a transfer stage uh, first and then docking our spacecraft to it and then uh, so that that will be a more efficient way of sending the craft to wherever we need to go. And so this will be the transfer stage. This is going to be the stage that will be the, essentially a tug. It's got docking ports at both ends so that it'll be uh, multi-use, multi-purpose, and uh, if we have large spacecraft we can dock it at this end, uh, though we'll have to make sure that the, the rockets have clearance. Uh, and then for small spacecraft we have it at this end. If we need to use it for emergencies, for instance we have a spacecraft stranded somewhere, we can send for that. And uh, it's got plenty of RCS as you can see. It's got one of these lander cans, which I haven't used too much, but uh, they're uh, they're lower in weight than the command pods, so that's a benefit. And uh, also, it's very easy to attach stuff to them. And people have been hankering for lights, so I put lights. I put lights to uh, illuminate the center section, to illuminate whatever is approaching the docking ports. And uh, so hopefully that will be satisfactory. And otherwise, that's all this needs, really. It needs a lot of fuel. And it leads, needs uh, the, the nukes, of course, to make sure that it's an efficient transfer stage. The downside is, of course, that the transfers will be very slow because it's tugging a lot of weight. And that could cause problems, but, but I think it'll be fine for now. Yep. So, uh, why don't we... Uh, and the rest of this is the standard launch stage, right? There's nothing new here. This is what I've been using so far. Still, no main sails. The skippers and the nine, uh, well, it's actually eight LVT-45s and one LVT-30 in the center. So, uh, same old, same old. Let's get this out to uh, orbit, and we'll just have one of these in orbit. Uh, um, the commenter suggested three, but uh, that's unnecessary. Launches cost money, and in fact, in point two four, they, I think they said they were going to really cost money. So uh, if you're doing career mode, so we have to plan for that. We have to prepare for the fact that we are going to be limited by the cost of our rockets as well now in the next version of Kerbal Space Program. And I intend to make sure that my rockets uh, do remain very efficient. So I hope uh, there is some facility for uh, for saying, OK, well, if you reuse a rocket design that's more efficient than uh, creating a new one. Uh, that would be an interesting thing because after all that's true, uh, mass manufacturing and all, if you just uh, build a fresh new rocket every time, that's going to cause more cost for manufacturing. 
but I don't think we're going to get that. But anyway, let's just uh, get this into orbit, shall we? Oh, uh, we have to pick the crew. Uh, well, we're going to have a team mission, right? We've got uh, we've got this man by somebody, and then we're going to have somebody else in the uh, what's well, essentially going to be the lander stage. Um, Bill and Bob seem like the natural team, honestly. Yeah, I think uh, Bill 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 is the kind of guy that likes to be stuck in orbit and not doing much landing. I think so. It'll be well. Then Bob also has very little courage. Actually, uh, yeah, Bob has very little courage. We'll send him on this part. All right. So uh, yeah, let's launch this. Now you'll notice I haven't specified a destination for my mission yet, and so we'll talk about that once we launch the part that will actually be conducting the mission. This is just a tug or transfer stage. So, SAS on, throttle up, and launch. Now if I played my cards right, these state, the launch stage should expand just short of orbit, or right around orbit, uh, so uh, this stage will complete its orbit. So we won't have any space junk sitting in space, this will all fall back to the atmosphere. Okay, we are going to put it into a high orbit so that it's easy for the other craft to rendezvous with it. And also there's another consideration. Uh, the other consideration is that we need to be able to burn out of the system with this. And uh, acceleration on the nuclear stage is really slow. So yeah, need to keep that in mind. Otherwise, I'd keep it tight because of the Oberth effect, uh, which means that if you're at a closer altitude to Kerbin, then you're going to benefit from Kerbin's gravity producing a potential energy effect, which allows you to get a bigger boost out of your orbit for each delta V than you otherwise would. But uh, it's better to actually be able to make the burns than to try and get uh, Oberth effect benefit because uh, actually if you uh, fail to hit the maneuver node as smoothly as possible you gotta get into trouble. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, and in fact you can look at plenty of my other videos where I fail to uh, where I'm too tight around Kerbin and my maneuver goes horribly wrong and I spend a lot of Delta V more than I expected to. Let's see what's left in this stage and then uh, use the nuclear stage to complete my orbit. You can see that the big stage is going to fall back into the atmosphere here. Okay, that's that stage expended. And now this is our tug, if you will. And here's its acceleration. Um, not great. Now, if, if uh, I knew exactly where we were going to, if I had decided that already and figured out where my per uh, periapsis should be, I could keep my periapsis low and still get the benefit from the Oberth effect, but I have not decided that yet, and I haven't made the necessary calculations, so, and in fact, I think this particular, p well, no, I, I, you know what, hmm, maybe it's time to decide. Uh, maybe I should keep my periapsis low, and if my periapsis is there, then what we actually want to do is get into, get to somewhere inside. So for instance, let, let me just plot so you can see. So uh, if, 
You see, Kerbin is going in this direction, and if our periapsis is here, we will we want to go in this direction because our apoapsis is already high, and we'll just boost that further. So I'm going to add the maneuver here, and actually it'll have to be over here uh, for practical reasons. So let's say we do boost up from here. Yeah, so we hit uh, one of the inner planets. Well, we won't actually hit it though. Uh, that's true though. We uh, we would have to still wait around for the home and transfer point. See, we're not. Uh, let's say we target Moho, um, and perhaps we'll need an inclination adjustment as well. I'm plotting this, but I still don't have the rest of my craft up here. Okay, we got one there. Come on, you. Okay, well, you can see how far off we are. Moho is a tough one to get to. Yeah. I mean, you can see it's already 1,800, which is more than we spent to get to Jewel. And if we tried to force the issue now, hmm, say we tried to force the issue, which means, well, actually we could uh, just uh, do it like this, which actually would be better. Let's see. Oh, it's even worse, isn't it? So the other way. It's even worse though it uh, costed us less because that was the way to do it. But how much would we have to spend? Let's say right at periapsis. Oh, we aren't even hitting that. Wow, look at that. Woo, okay. That's uh, just way off. Yeah, I think we're going to have to wait around for the transfer point. It doesn't look like this uh, easy. So, I guess I've set my heart on Moho. Um, actually, the first thing I was thinking of was actually doing some crater hopping on the moon. Uh, because we've got this transfer stage, the lander would have extra fuel and we could go from one moon crater to another. We've only hit the Midlands, I think. Yeah? I don't think we've even hit a crater. All we could, all we need to do is hit some craters and we would get more science out of that. Maybe we should try that first. Uh, Moho... We're not even, even in the right place for Moho. Okay, so how about uh, we try the moon first? Alright, so let me get the lander stage up. Okay, here again I did all the designing off camera because I want I fiddle around with quite a lot and it took me a long time to get this right and I wanted to remember the lights for everybody so and there's no way I would remember the lights and the solar panels at the same time if I tried to build it on camera and have to worry about what I was talking about so but we've got solar panels and lights so we're all set first of all the launcher I've called it the Pi launcher in keeping with my uh, Greek letter naming convention and it's just the center portion of the Lambda Launcher that you just saw extended. It's got more fuel tanks up top. And it can be extended because it's carrying a lesser load at the top here. So um, it's it's actually still a little bit over. Well, actually it's a lot overpowered to carry this particular payload. It can carry a much heavier payload. I think it could carry uh, something on the order of one of these tanks. Should be able to. Okay, and that's to orbit. Now, this, well, actually, it would be able to carry that to orbit, but it might need a boost. Anyway, I haven't done the calculation for that. Let me not talk about that yet. Okay, it's a single stage to orbit system, so actually, it, it might be inefficient for that. It doesn't have some of the good qualities of some of the other single stage to orbit systems I've built before. Anyway, um... The beauty of this lander is, first of all, it's using the lander can, which means that it has the docking port at top. It's got the parachutes on the side, two there. 
It's got, uh, it's I'll get everything very tight here. The only thing it's missing is we're not carrying any science juniors because they, they take a lot of space. And if you want to make a nice tight lander, it's not good to carry science juniors, but it's carrying everything else. It's got four goo containers, four thermometers, four of, what are these? Uh, gravioli, the new ones, uh, the seismometers and the barometers. So we could go to four different destinations and get all the data that we want and uh, we would be fine. So crater hopping on the moon sounds like a doable thing. Um, I intend to land in four craters. We've got the ladders, we've got everything. So yeah, let's try to land in four craters on the moon. And uh, yeah, who... Well, of course, we already know who we want to get to do that. We'll, we'll have Bill do it. And... Uh, well, I think the best has been said for this. If the whole moon trip works out, we'll uh, we'll probably send this over to Moho next. All right, so uh, see you on the launch pad. Ooh, got some wiggling at the top there as physics loaded. One other good thing that I forgot to tell you in the VAB about this is because we're using this lander can and the docking ports at the top, we can dump the lander stage down here. Once this is docked with the transfer stage, and we empty this uh, lander stage full of fuel, we can just decouple it. It's really only this top part that has all the science and, of course, Bill. And that's the part that's going to be re-entering the atmosphere. And it's got its independent RCS. So, um, remember, we, the portion that Bob is in is the transfer stage. But we don't want to have that re-enter. Well, we can't have that re-enter because it has no parachutes. It's got no way to re-enter. Okay, so that is not a thing that's going to happen. Bob is not going to... Bob is going to stay up there for a while. Um, so this is the only part that re-enters. And uh, it's got all the stuff there. And the way it re-enters is using its RCS. Okay, it's going to RCS down into the atmosphere. So uh, it can do that on its own. It would have to do that on its own because, of course, we can't use the stage that Bob's in, otherwise that would re-enter too, and, or it would have to rescue itself, and that's just too complicated. Alright, so uh, SAS is on. If you didn't follow that, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, Thoral is up, and let's have Bill... Well, we could time it a bit. Yeah, I guess uh, let, let's actually wait a little bit. Though uh, I'm a little bit worried about what happens when physics reloads. But uh, let's get... Uh, let's get Bob pop right around here okay probably not the perfect timing and maybe it's completely off I don't know I don't usually bother to time it so So this is an inefficient system, It, however, would be an uh, e efficient system if we took into account the fact that this is basically the same stage as the rocket that we saw before, and so manufacturing costs would be cut down if we just reused this portion and added more fuel to the top of it. But And really what we have right here is basically a one-stage Falcon 9, I guess. I mean, I really should have made this two stages. I, I don't know why I insist on making it one stage. I could just slip, a, I guess, a Poodle engine here and, and it would be alright. And it'd be more efficient and everything. You can see, sort of see what I'm doing here. I'm patiently looking for the intercept. Looks like we've got a good situation here. Okay, and that's... You can see uh, the separation was actually going up starting there, so I need to stop that. And uh, at our apoapsis we'll be able to burn so that we actually meet up with uh, Lambda 4 over here. Alright. 
And I think that's uh, this stage spent, actually. Why don't we uh, use a little bit more, uh, use the tiny bit left of it and then throw it back so that uh, it will fall back into the atmosphere. It would be better if I did some staging with it instead of just have a uh, single stage like this. And yep. So, uh, there was a question about uh, being able to get to the moon and what it takes and such. Uh, First, first, if you've never done it before, build a rocket that is tremendously overpowered. Uh, build a rocket that's tremendously overpowered and has at least three stages. That's, that's step one. And the three stages, if you want a recommendation, the first stage should be... Uh, a mainsail, the second stage should be a skipper, and the third stage should be a poodle. And this isn't quite good. And in that case, your your actual uh, the stage that you're actually getting to the moon and that will return. Hopefully you can keep that under 10 tons. Uh, well, you know what? With a mainsail... Uh, the Poodle is a transfer stage. You could get a pretty big lander to the moon like that. You could get a pretty big lander. That is... That would be a very inefficient rocket, but for first attempt at getting to the moon in Kerbal Space Program, that's not a bad thing. Keep it simple. Uh, once you see how much extra fuel you had on each stage, you can optimize. Alright, I'll take that. So we are uh, using some of the fuel on the lander stage, but that's fine because uh, we are actually going to be using the transfer stage, because we're not doing an interplanetary transfer here. Uh, we can use the fuel on the transfer stage that would normally be used to get to difficult locations like Moho in order to refuel the lander so we can make more than one landing on the moon. That's the plan. I could probably test this out on Minmus first instead, but but that's not quite as much fun. Oh, uh, lights. Yes, people wanted lights. Well, here are lights. It's, it's lit now. It's even got lights for landing. Be able to see what we've actually got here. I think 400 meters is fine. Okay, so let's just point out our target. Open up our docking port. Make sure we're controlling from there in preparation. And there it is. We'll uh, let's get close to it. Fortunately, both ships are controlled, so we don't have to worry too much. But we need to kill some relative velocity here quickly. Okay, let's see how far away we are. Uh, 500 meters. Not bad. Let's use RCS from here on. We can refill that too at the at Lambda Four. Okay, uh, let's get Lambda Four's lights on because yeah, it has them too, and get its docking port open. And let's see now. Can I find there? Right. Let's have it turn towards Pi. And I did put uh, solar panels, so let's uh, extend those while we're at it, so that we don't lose electric charge unnecessarily. 
Though uh, we are on the dark side, so. Okay, uh, looks like we're all set on this end. Maybe a little bit of uh, adjustment on the pointing. Okay, back to the other one. Okay, we seem to be a bit off, so let's correct that by getting rid of the relative velocity. We could probably just nudge it over to the... to the target. Back to this and see if we can target... no, we're still out of range to target the docking port. Aha, okay. Let's adjust our everything. Okay, that's us docked. And there's the moon, isn't it? So, uh, I might have mentioned that uh, in response to the question about transferring the moon, once you see the moon, you can pretty much transfer for it. Uh, and here I'm plotting it just to prove the point, I guess. But uh, you want to transfer to it when it rises above the horizon, and uh, here, where it's uh, a little bit above the horizon, obviously, uh, is still good. Still good. Uh, it looks like our control is from the right direction, so that's good. But we need to shut off the lander engine, because otherwise that's going to be working against us. But otherwise, looks like we're good to go. And it so happens that we're burning out of our periapsis, which is perfect. So we didn't have to do quite as much work. Normally it'd be more like 800 meters per second that you have to plan for. If you don't have the 800 meters per second, so 800 meters per second, let's say 850 going there. And then about uh, 250 to get into orbit around there. Then estimate about 750 to 800 to land, though I usually probably even take more than that because I'm so uh, slow about the landing. Um, then another, what's probably around 600 to get into orbit again. And then another 200 or so to get back, 250-ish. I probably have the exact numbers, but that's, that's basically your Delta V budget for the whole moon mission. If you see that your resulting orbit does this sort of twisty thing around the moon, uh, that's actually pretty good. That probably means that you're not going to have to do quite as much work to get into orbit. I mean, after all, if it's going to wind around the moon like that already, uh, probably means it's getting deeply influenced by the moon's gravity, and that's, uh, that's a good thing if you want to get into orbit around the moon. Okay, we can uh, take care of this a little bit quicker. But you can see what I meant by uh, by the slow acceleration. This is uh, the moon burn is not uh, not the longest burn we ever do in Kerbal Space Program. It's one of the shortest, but but yeah, it takes forever with this. Nice spacecraft, though. So on. Uh, for after this mission, Bob is just gonna stay in orbit. We're gonna just refuel him. So uh, we gotta send somebody up with uh, fuel. What we won't have to send up is these nuclear engines again, right? These nuclear engines combined are 4.5 tons. That's a huge amount. So all we need is to get into orbit, and the uh, craft that eventually docks with him could probably do everything else with uh, the tiny little uh, what you got, uh, the 20 kilonewton. Uh, rockets and also some RCS and that would be enough to uh, meet up with uh, Bob and refill him. It'll probably take an orange tank though. 
if you combine all this, and then the fuel that I would need to uh, actually get to him. One orange tank and also uh, one of the big RCS tanks to refill the RCS. While we're talking about refilling things though, maybe I should uh, do that. We didn't use too much in the lander stage to get to the rendezvous. It's got a lot of Delta V to lander stage because I was thinking that we would need to get on and off some difficult places. I don't even think I need to refill the monopropellant. So getting to the moon, in general, you don't want to burn directly to it, I guess. I mean, I haven't actually made a study of that, but in general, you definitely don't want to burn directly to things. Um, but in this case, it works. It just so happens. Do I have to keep an eye on this? Because the long time we're taking to burn has already deviated us from our intended path. And, uh, and in fact, I'm going to replot it. I'm going to replot it entirely, and I'm going to aim at my prograde vector. Because we're probably off. And that's the problem with uh, with the long trans the long uh, burns. You're gonna end up a little bit off, and that little bit off is gonna cost you a lot of delta v. Okay, well I guess I'll just take that. This is actually the more of a standard free return trajectory. You can see uh, it does the double back around the moon and then slings you right back to uh, very close to Kerbin's atmosphere. You'll also notice that I'm a little bit short of 100% because these nukes tend to overheat. Let me make sure it's not drawing anything from this. Yeah, it's interesting that it used to, uh, across the docking port, always drop, uh, draw fuel through uh, the docking port, but it doesn't seem to now. Uh, too many lights, perhaps. We've got uh, a little bit of a blinking situation here. But yeah, I like these lander cans just so you can fit all the science instruments on it and a lot of them. So we've got plenty of science tucked on there. This will be a very useful craft and I think it will also be something that I will modify for the rescue mission, the Jeb rescue mission. For that, uh, I'll have to do some thinking, Pro possibly... Yeah, well, I'll just think about it. Uh, there's a lot to figure out. but. The idea of using this thing to transfer whatever we use for the Jeb rescue mission makes sense. I'll definitely be using something like this. Well, we've got Jeb, uh, we've got Bob in orbit anyway, so might as well use him. Eventually, we'll have to figure out how to get Bob back, but that's that's later. Okay, I've probably overdone it, haven't I? Yep. Mm hmm. Too much talking, not much, not enough paying attention. It's really not good to have one of these uh, orbits too far out because that means that you have to burn more as you get into the moon. You can see I no longer loop the loop around the moon because the and I want to loop the loop around the moon. There we go. That's a free return trajectory. And this will make it easier to get into orbit around the moon. If, as long as your, uh, your orbit going out is, you know, roughly tangent to the moon, you'd like your apoapsis to hit the moon's orbit directly. That would be best. But as long as it's close, it's fine. If it's stretching way out, though, you're going to have a lot to do once you get around the moon. Okay, so we're uh, we're on our way. Let's just time warp, and I'll I'll meet you once we get into the lunar sphere of influence. Okay, here we are, and uh, as usual, we'll just get into a loose orbit. An inclined orbit is fine because we need to hit places that we haven't hit before. Might even want to make it more inclined than this. Okay, I'm just taking a look at what kinds of places we can hit with this orbit. It looks pretty good. 
I mean, uh, all we've hit is the Midlands, so uh, as long as we get some craters in, we're, we're probably alright. Have to remember which way around we're going. So that the rendezvous will be fine. Okay, I think we should start burning here. So about 250 here for the getting into orbit. Okay, 123 by 167 is fine. And it looks like we intercept some craters. Yep, alright. So let's... Uh, the one place we can't go is like right there, which is where Merman Kerbin uh, landed. So the rest is all open for exploration. Let's make sure we're all filled up. Yeah. Yeah. Could get into a tighter orbit though. It would make it a little bit easier to rendezvous, I guess. Well, in a pinch, we could use this this section to actually do the rendezvous. So I guess it's not too bad. All right. That is very loose though. No, let's just let's, let's just keep it in uh Oh all right, all right, all right. Uh yeah, let's let's actually drop down a bit. We'll call it fifty K. I'm worried a little bit that uh I might, you know, not have enough fuel to get back up if I get a little bit uh, ahead of myself, so I want to make this as straightforward as possible. So I'll get around to the periapsis and also do a burn to circularize a bit. Okay, I'll call that good enough. And we should decouple and start our journeys. Double check the fuel. Okay. Bill Kerman can back away from uh, there. We'll close the docking port just for looks. We will lower landing gear now so that I don't uh, do anything silly. Throttle is down. RCS should be off now. And uh, SAS on. And we activate this engine. Uh, well, we've got lights on, but we've got a lot of electric charge. Should be fine. We do have solar panels. Let us extend solar panels to verify that. We've got one on that side, and for some reason this one isn't hotkeyed. Uh, but we'll reserve that. But uh, we're on the dark side anyway, so we don't need to extend those yet. And we've also got the little solar panels, as Argumus suggested, that we should slap on. So we have those as well. And plot for some sort of landing. Uh, this crater should... Uh, how about we go in order? Hit this one, hit this one, and then hit that one. So like that. I guess that makes sense, huh? So let's... Try to hit this one like that. That looks like a smooth descent, doesn't it? Right. Now, as we do this descent burn, we must make sure that we do not hit our other craft, and it looks like we'll be fine. Now, this this engine is a little bit overpowered as far as a moon landing is concerned for this craft because I anticipated using it for much more, well, places with more gravity, let's say. So, so yeah, I'm keeping that in mind. 
I, it isn't good enough for something like Tylo, definitely not good enough for something like Eve, but uh, you know, I'm looking more towards places like Val. Not Lathe, I don't think. I'll have to see the exact calculations on some of this. It's not got a thrust to weight ratio of 1. It's got uh, good enough to handle 0.5. Not too much more than that. we are. And I'll start burning right about... Yeah. Oh, sunrise. Let's say... You know what, I think we've got plenty of accel acceleration, so I'll hold off. What I really need is a time to impact indicator and also a time left in stage indicator and then I'd be able to do this just fine. Well, at least I think I would. Probably still mess it up. But anyway, like charge is still fine. Okay, I do need to consider our speed here. Uh, you know what? That's a lot of excellent. Well, okay, yeah. You can see all I'm doing is I'm gonna bring the apoapsis to me. And this produces a more vertical and less horizontal situation for us as we get down here okay can't even tell when we are around the crater area looks like we're close all right I think we can start uh, burning for landing Round here would be good. Let's shade a little bit south. At some point I'd expect to see my little landing lights shine on the ground, but I don't know how quickly that's going to be. Oh, there's some glow. Right at the last moment. Well, thanks, guys. All right, uh, that's us on the moon for the first time. Uh, I mean, for the first time in this sequence of missions where I'm going to have a lot of landings on the moon, okay? Uh, been here before plenty of times. So, let's do the business. Everything's all lined up, so let's pick this container and these instruments to do first. Northwest Crater, 40 science. Log seismic data. A minor quake in the surface. I uh, hope that doesn't topple our, our lander. Okay, 80 science. All right. Uh, interesting. Log pressure data, of course, never can be done. Log gravity data. Detailed survey of local gravity, 80 science. Keep that. And temperature, oh no. Temperature data. Okay, 32 science. All right, Bill, you're gonna be able to plant a lot of flags in this mission. Let's do the first. Okay. Well, let's let you plant the flag first. Okay, so, uh, Bill at the Northwest Crater, and as usual, I'll add the date. Okay, the first of many landings, many happy landings, sort of like a wish or some kind. Okay, uh, yep, of other business, take surface sample. 
combination of basaltic rocks and breccia. Uh, 120. Keep the data. EVA, the dust is getting everywhere. Yes, keep that data as well. And uh, before I forget, why don't we do a crew report here too? So let's get back in. Grab. Up you get. Okay, so uh, in the crew report. All right. Now here's the thing. I'll retract the ladders for now. I'm pondering whether to just hop over to this one. I don't know what kind of delta V that would take. I also don't know if just uh, hopping out of the crater and settling around here would be something different. Because, I mean, this flag is all the way over here. Maybe this is uh, different. Maybe this lowlands. But the more we do, I mean, eventually we're going to have to save enough fuel to get back to Lambda 4. I think I'll need at least 100 fuel for that. Well, um, let's try for over here, and then, uh, but if I think I can get over here, I'll do that. In any case, we're launching for 90 degrees. Um, looks like we're ready to go, right, Bill? All right. Gear up. Oh, we can keep the gear down, actually. There's no drag, so... Okay, let's see how this is shaping up. Make sure we don't bump into anything. Yeah, we're fine. really want to get to that crater, but I'm, if I burned any more than what I've got done already, I'm a little bit worried that I might not have enough. We're already going very fast, though. In fact, can I use RCS to do this? You know, I don't think I'm even going to get to that crater. No, it takes uh, too much of an inclination thing, so... Oh, that's so close. Okay, uh, let's say... This is probably not the best way to do things. Um... Okay, uh, this is going to be dicey. Actually, why don't I do a delta V calculation while we're up here? Uh, that way I'll know whether I can get back into orbit and how much I need. So, let's say we end up with one ton of fuel left, which is 90 units of uh, liquid fuel on the matching oxidizer. So, that would be like this. eight hundred and three that should be enough to get into orbit and then the mod propellant can help us with the rendezvous so I'm looking to save uh, save 90 for the for the way back if you will but I don't think I can hmm. Yeah, I mean, if uh, 800, if if 90 units of liquid fuel is 800 delta V, I'm going to need to use a lot more than that just to land because I have to slow down. I have to subtract all this 500 out. 
Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm gonna abort that idea. I'm gonna head back to the Lambda 4 and pick up some more fuel. I think that's the safest thing to do. And this is uh, not a mission where we need to be taking any silly chances here. Uh, this seems like a very inadvisable direction to burn. Okay, uh, okay, no, that's fine, actually. All right, all right. I can see what it's doing. Strange, but works. Pointing at the surface to get into orbit. Okay, separation of one. So I'm gonna dock with it and uh, I'm gonna call it an episode at that point and uh, do the remaining three landings in the next episode and bring Bill back. I think that's the plan. So let's let's just get uh, to our rendezvous. Let's be careful about that. Uh, this is really the worst for you to be in. There we go. <laughs> Let's be very, very careful about this. Wow. Okay. That is our periapsis, right? We're not. Uh, we're not getting any lower, right? Whew. Wait until this starts going up. a bit close so at this distance we can use RCS it's best to save fuel because we are going to be making all those other landings and it's the same fuel pool if you will so keep as much of it as possible Okay, that's us docked, and uh, I guess I'll start to transfer fuel while I do my sign-off. So, we will continue this mission to the moon to exploit more of the moon science in the next episode, and then following that, since this test of this system seems to be working out quite nicely, I hope to bring it to Moho. Uh, and the only reason we didn't bring it to Moho this time is because Moho was in totally the wrong location, so... I would have to have time warped anyway, so the moon mission seemed a little bit more more viable anyway. So we'll finish this up and see if we can bring... Uh, which one did I have in this pod? <laughs> it was... Uh, come on. Okay, uh, whoever I have in the lander can here. There, Bill. Okay, so uh, yep. I'll bring Bill back home, keep Bob in orbit, and uh, refill Bob, and then uh, all will be well, hopefully. And hopefully we'll get tons of science. I mean, just that one landing at the Northwest Crater seems to have gotten us quite a lot, so as long as I can keep these guys safe, it should be quite lucrative. Alright, so actually, yep. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.